You see, I hear a lot of people say that uh, money doesn't answer to prayer. It's not true. It's not true. It's just preaching. So if you don't understand preaching, you get confused. When people want to emphasize some things, they what? They de-emphasize other things. But it does not mean that those things are not true. My dear, if you don't understand prayer, you'll be poor. I hear what I'm saying because money is spiritual. Someone say money is spiritual. And the forces that control money are what? Spiritual. If you want to know where the highest demons are, go to Aso Rock. The most senior demons in Nigeria are not in your village. What are they going to be doing in your village? The most serious demons are where? In the place of what? Power. That's where they are. In Aso Rock. That's where they are. If you want to know where Satan visits in Nigeria, whenever he comes around, that's a rock. Why would he be wasting time with you and your village head? Whereas there's one man that one, one policy can affect the whole nation. You know, you know the president can wake up and say, everybody, there will be no work tomorrow. And there will be no work tomorrow. True or false? You will get angry, you can protest, but there will be no work what? Tomorrow. Didn't it happen during covid that's why the globalists they have seen how they can shut down the world there are so many ways now even things you don't expect how can you expect that because of sickness sickness if you want to fall sick fall sick what's your business because of sickness nations were shut down economics were collapsed and some other economies were enhanced can you imagine executive decisions so if you want to be wealthy you must understand that you must know how to use prayer to control the power centers is somebody hear what i'm saying and that place you meet demons the highest number of demons is in the market Did you hear what i said in the what market where money is exchanging hands you will meet a lot of demons there because the movement of money is influenced by spirits if you're hearing me, Sam, hearing you. Both good and evil. That's why in those days they used to say, if you go to market, if you don't throw down things, if you throw down things, you want to pick them up, pick it like this. Do you remember those things? But if you bend down, you will see something. You will notice that some people that came to market, their leg is not touching the ground. <laughs> I don't know. But I can tell you that <laughs> there is not everybody that came to market is not a human being. But the truth is that there are more people in that market that you are not seeing than the people you are what? Seeing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you don't know how to control the power centers, you'll be broke. That is why, whether you like it or not, people that are wealthy go into all kinds of occultic practices. So if there is no neutral ground, if you're going to be a wealthy Christian, you must go deep in the supernatural. Someone say deep in the supernatural. Someone say deep in the supernatural alone. Very deep. If not, they can knock you off the sky. See our brother now that has been supporting churches. Just one, one demon just slapped the aircraft and that's it. He's gone. He's gone. And that church is, is he used to supply. They're in trouble. I've seen it happen many times. People rise to be a blessing to the church. Before you know it, they go into financial distress. And many of them begin to fight the pastor. They say, I, I sold into this church. But it's not the church that is your problem. It's the devil that came after you that is what? Your problem. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? That is why if you're a Christian here, you must learn how to bind the devil. Tell your neighbor, bind the devil. You must learn how to bind him. Bind him over your business. Bind him over your school. Bind him over your shop. Bind him over your hospital. Whatever your establishment is. And you must learn how to release angels to work on your behalf. To bring people, to bring customers. To influence policies for your good. And everybody said amen. So prayer is very, very important when it comes to finances. How do you pray for finances? How do you pray for finances? Let's I'll, we'll use the scripture as a guide. Psalm 68 verse 28. Let me just see what I can do in five minutes. Psalm 68, verse 28. How do you pray for finances? Psalm 68, verse 28. It said, Thy God has commanded his strength. Strengthen, O God, that which you have wrought for us. So, 
God has commanded his strength. He's talking about financial strengthening here now. Lord, strengthen what you have done for us. Strengthen our business. So that's one prayer you can pray. Lord, strengthen this business. Lord, strengthen this ministry. Lord, take what we are doing to another level. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's where the answer started. Verse 29 now. If you, if you want to understand this scripture, remember Cyrus, he said to all the neighbors, strengthen the Israelites with gold and with what? With silver. So there's money strengthening. That's what they call Akune Megini in Shobike. I hear what I'm saying. There's a lot that gives vitamins. There's a lot that supplies calories. You are just down. You just say, pep, pep, pep. you just open it. Zero, zero, zero. Zero zero zero. Oh, you get up, start praying. Allah bakaba kaba 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 lekebe kebe kebe. Look at you that was praying before. Elebele ebelebe ebelebe. You just see that one, or you start dancing. You see yourself dancing as some, you know, just some zeros. So he said, because of thy temple in Jerusalem, shall kings what pre bring presents unto you. Whenever you have a project and you present it to God, God moves men to supply the resources you need. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? So, if you need money for anything, ask God. Someone say, ask God. Matthew 7, 7, what does it say? Ask and you shall what? Receive. Seek and you shall what? Find. Knock and the door shall be what? Open to you. The God that we serve is a God that said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness what thereof and they that what dwell in it. So God has the money, God has the resources, God even has the people, he can influence them. The Bible says that the hearts of kings are like what they are like rivers in the hand of the Lord. He turns it as he what as he wills. So you are going for a job interview. Get on your knees and what? Pray. Ask God to turn that interview in your what? Favor. You open your shop. Get on your knees and what? Pray. Ask God to go and bring the customers for what? For you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You're bidding for a contract. Get on your knees and pray. Ask the Lord that owns the heavens and the earth to give you what? The contract. Never you underestimate the power of prayer to get your needs met. I hear what I'm saying. This is part of why people are not enjoying the things that Jesus died to give. Because they have forgotten the power of what? Prayer. Matthew 16, 23. Jesus said, John 16, 23, I mean, Jesus said, until now, you have asked me what? Nothing. He said, ask and you receive so that your joy will be what complete so neighbor ask and you shall receive look at it as in that day you shall ask me nothing verily verily i say to you whatsoever you ask the father in my name he will give it to you can you tell your neighbor whatever you ask the father no no i'm not hearing say whatever you ask the father in the name of jesus he will give it to you that job that deal that contract that admission he will what give it to you 